Hey there, good people, it's your Cripple Critic, and this week I want to talk about a slightly peculiar game called The Tea Room. So The Tea Room is a free game on the PC that's sort of a historical public bathroom simulator. Okay, right off the bat, I want to give a warning because The Tea Room, although it doesn't technically have any nudity in it, there is simulated sex in the game, and I will be talking about sex in more detail, way more than I usually do. I'm going to try to be as professional as possible, although it could be awkward because I'm not used to doing this. Anyway, after the not safe for work symbol I have up goes away, the graphic content is going to start. So sensitive viewers who are uncomfortable with that sort of thing, here's your warning. Okay? 3, 2, 1, go. So if you're not familiar with the creator of Tea Room, his name is Robert Yang, and he's known for making really over-the-top sexual games with not-so-subtle gay content. He's made hilariously bizarre games like Succulent, where you stick a popsicle in a dude's mouth, or Stick Sift, where you basically jerk off a gay car. I'm not kidding. I mean, they're pretty funny, I've played a few of them. I'll admit, though, I have kind of wrote them off as gimmicky gay sex games. What do I know, though? I believe games are a form of art, and maybe even these games are. Because I Anyway, what drew me to Robert Yang's newest game, The Tea Room, is that it was based on real events, which is pretty interesting. In 1962, the Mansfield, Ohio Police Department set up a hidden surveillance camera behind a two-way mirror and secretly filmed men having sex with other men in a public bathroom. The police used the film footage to imprison men for a year or more under Ohio's sodomy laws. By the end of the summer, they convicted 38 men on charges of sodomy. Whether or not you think this is public indecency, just being gay in 1962 was illegal. There weren't any gay bars back then either, so for most of these men, this was the only way they could meet other gay people. The game is set in the same town and time period. The creator was also inspired by Lord Humphrey's book he wrote in 1970 called Tea Room Trade, which is an 180 page sociological study of men who have anonymous sex with other men in public bathrooms. The term tea room is an old code word that gay men would use in order to talk about going to a public bathroom without arising suspicion. So Robert Yang definitely wanted to make this game about gay history, but he also wanted to make a statement about how video games deal with sex and violence. To quote him, he said, I have swapped out any pesky penises in my game for the only thing that the game industry will never moderate nor ban, guns. Now there's nothing wrong with guys appreciating other guys' guns, right? This is a jab at how the game industry usually has no problem with gun violence, but isn't too keen on male nudity. This is also a reference to how many of Robert Yang's games have been banned for their gay content on the popular streaming site Twitch. You can read all about it on his blog, I'll leave some links in the description box below. So yeah, the tea room is basically simulating these real life events that happened in Mansfield, Ohio. You wait in the bathroom and try to make eye contact with the right guy so you can initiate the encounter. You then proceed to lick the other man's gun until he's properly fired his bullets. <laughs> it's pretty simple. And you're doing this all while trying to avoid the police. If a cop catches you in the act, it's game over. Funny enough, the controls in Tea Room are fairly accessible to a lot of disabled gamers. If you like, you can play the entire game with just a mouse. Also, there's gamepad support. You left click to interact with most objects, or hold left click and drag. You can also leave the game anytime once you exit the stall by clicking on the exit door. In the options menu, you can invert the Y axis on the mouse, and there's a sensitivity slider you can change. For gamers with fine motor skill impairments, I recommend putting the sensitivity up all the way because licking each gun to completion can take a lot of effort. Every man's gun has certain sweet spots, if you will, and you have to hold left click and shake the mouse rapidly until the gun's done firing its bullets. Every gun has a certain amount of sweet spots you have to take care of and that depends on, well, the size of the gun. Sometimes it can take 5 times or up to 50, it just depends. It doesn't help, there's a 3 minute time limit every time you encounter a new dude. 
On the visual side of things, there's a brightness slider you can change if you think the game is too dark. Also, you can alternate in the options menu from windowed mode to full screen. The only place you'll be in the game is a dirty, grimy bathroom, so the main colors I saw were lots of grays and brown. Nothing you need to worry about for colorblind players. It is important to keep a lookout for the police in the window, and you can definitely tell a police car from the red and blue lights, but the police car itself looks different than any other car in the game, so there's no need to worry if you can't see the difference between red and blue. For the hearing impaired, there's no need to worry because in Tea Room, there's not much spoken dialogue except for when a policeman catches you and they say freeze, but by then it's too late anyway. There is old 60s music playing in the background and that could set a mood for you, but nothing too important that you need. I will admit that it is easier to prepare for a policeman if you hear the sound of a car pulling up behind you, but you are able to just turn around and look too. Still, I guess captions would have been helpful. After getting enough of the men's guns to fire, you can collect gun trophies. Collect 8 trophies and you'll unlock the epilogue, which is actually worth watching, so I won't spoil it. Ah, so there you have it. Tea Room has some strange subject matter for a game, and it's definitely not for everyone, but it's much more than a sex simulator, and any game that tries to tackle gay history in a meaningful way is cool to me. I mean, guns are cool, right? Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this game in the comments below. Was it shocking? It was pretty funny, right? Let me know. Alright guys, and thanks again. As always, I'll see you later.